Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Good Shabbos, and uh, welcome to uh, all of us the Sabbath morning. Uh, we begin as our uh, choir sings a very traditional Jewish hymn for early in the day, as our choir sings Ma Tovu. in the Sidur, in the Bluebound Prayer Book, to page 297. 297. Let me mention at the outset that uh, in this edition of the traditional prayer book, uh, the parts that appear in English in italics are those that are as traditionally to be read by each of us, all of us, in unison with one another. We're not likely to announce that each time and interrupt the continuity of our worship experience. So we would ask you on your own, whenever we read the parts in English and italics, is whenever we read or chant in Hebrew, on your own, please do join in prayer with the rest of us. Near the bottom of page 297. Nishmat kol chai tivarech et shimcha Adonai Eloheinu Veruach kol basar tefa'er udromeim zichacha malkeinu tamid. Min ha'olam va'ad ha'olam ata el. Ein lanu melech ela ata. Let every living soul bless your name, O Lord our God, and let every human being acclaim your majesty forever and ever. Through all eternity, you are God. We have no king but you. God of all ages, ruler of all creatures, Lord of all generations, all praise to you. You guide the world with steadfast love, your creatures with tender mercy. You neither slumber nor sleep. You awaken the sleeping and arouse the dormant. You give speech to the silent, freedom to the enslaved, and justice to the oppressed. To you alone we give thanks as we pray together. Though our mouths should overflow with song as the sea, our tongues with melody as the roaring waves, our lips with praise as the heavens wide expands, and though our eyes would shine as the sun and the moon, our arms extend like eagles' wings, our feet speed swiftly as deer, still we could not fully thank you, Lord our God and God of all ages, or bless your name enough for even one of your infinite kindnesses to our ancestors and to us. Ha'il b'tatsu motu zecha, ha'gadol b'chvod shemecha, ha'gibor la'netzach v'hanora b'noratecha, ha'melech ha'yoshev al kisei ram v'nisa. Shochen ha'dimarom Oh, 
Rim Titalol, of the great Sadikim Titbaroch, of the Rishon Hasidim Titbaroch, of the Perem Hiroshim Titbaroch. Vamakalot, we've our vote, Amcha Beit Yisrael. Rina yit pa ashim ha mal kenu, behold or vador. Yish tabach shim ha la ad mal kenu, ha el ha melech ha gadol vaha kadosh, vashamayam uva arets. Baro ha ta donai. Hail melech Tishpachot, el adaot, adon aniflaot, abucher b'shirei zimra, melech el chei ha'olami. It cut all, it cut all, Shemay Rabo. The Almaldi Vrachrute Vyamnik Balchute, the Chaychon of Yomechon, the Chayay, the Cholbet Israel, Pagalo Vizman Kari Vayimaru. Vish tabach vit par vit romam vit nasei Vit ador vit alev vit alal Shem nei de kodesho Lelam in kol mechata v'shirata Tosh bechata v'nechemato Damiran be'almo v'yimaro just a moment, we're going to return together to a prayer uh, known in Jewish tradition as Baruch Hu. A Baruch Hu is a, the formal Jewish call to worship, and it's a cue. It signals our entrance together into the main body of the traditional Shabbos morning worship experience. It's therefore most appropriate that at this point in our service, prior to the formal call to prayer, that for a timeless and a deeply meaningful presentation to our bar mitzvah, for a presentation to Bradley, we call upon Jerry and Sylvia Winston. Bradley, nobody has to tell you that today is a very special day in your life. Why is it so special? Because as long as you live, which we hope will be for a long, long time, you will never forget it. The reasons for its importance may change as you mature, but the meaning and significance of this ceremony will never change. Today, you're accepted as a man, albeit a very young man. And as a young man that you are, an important aspect of this occasion is the gifts you receive. You'll receive many gifts, some extremely lavish, generous, some over generous. But remember, all of them are tokens of love and affection for you and your family. It's only natural that you'll prize some more than others, regardless of monetary value. But as the years go by, you'll forget most of these gifts, and sadly, many of the people who gave them to you. But you'll never forget this day people who made it important to you. In keeping with tradition, your grandmother Sylvia and I wanted to give you something which you would always remember in connection with your bar mitzvah. 
carry with you through the rest of your life and your children's lives. Something symbolic of your religion it would always remind you of this day and occasionally of us. With that thought in mind, your grandma called a friend in Israel and had this talus made especially for you from us. May you wear it often, good health, and happy occasions. Congratulations, young man. We love you. Baruch Ata Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Asher Kitshanu B'mitzvotav, Yitzivanu Lehita Tef Batsitzi. Blessed is the Lord our God, ruler of the universe, who hallows us with his mitzvot and teaches us to wrap ourselves in the fringe tali. Turn to Baruch Hu, page 351 in the prayer book. And as we continue at the very bottom of page 351, for Baruch Hu we rise and remain standing until after Shema. You are manifest in the heavens, the work of your hands. And in our own life, too, in every act of goodness, we feel your spirit within us. You are present in the life of your people, Israel. You are messenger and witness from Sinai until now. Help us, O God, to hold fast to the truths our ancestors taught and to welcome the truths that are yet to unfold today and tomorrow. O God, God of Israel, Israel help, help us to bear witness, witness to your presence in the world, in hearts that, that invite you to, to enter. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Declare together. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one. Blessed is his glorious kingdom forever and ever. Be seated. In Hebrew and in English, we join in reading via Havta as one. Via Havta, eight Adonai, Elohecha, 
v'chol levavcha, v'chol nafshecha, v'chol modecha. V'hayu hadvarim ha'ele, asher anochi mitzavcha hayom al levavcha. V'shinantam levanecha, v'dibar tabam, v'shivtecha b'veitecha, u'vlechtecha v'aderech, u'vshochbecha, u'vkumecha. You shall love the Lord your God with all your mind, with all your strength, with all your being. Let these words which I command you this day upon your heart. Teach them faithfully to your children. Speak of them in your home and on your way, when you lie down and when you rise up. Ukshartam loot al yadecha, fahayu letotafot beine necha, uktaftam al mezuzot betecha, uvish arecha. Bind them as a sign upon your hand. Let them be a symbol before your eyes. Inscribe them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. Lama'an tiz guru v'asitem et kol mitzvotai v'item kedoshim le'elohechem ani aronai elohechem asher hotseti etchem me'eretz mitzrayim liyot lachem le'elohim ani aronai elohechem. Infinite God, creator and redeemer of all being, you are most high, most near. In all generations, we have cried out to you. We have put our trust in you. We have borne witness to your truth before the nations. Oh, now let your light and truth appear to us and lead us. Let them bring us to your holy mountain. We shall not fear then, though earth itself should shake. Though the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters thunder in rage, though the winds lift its waves to the very wall. We shall not fear, for you are with us. We shall rejoice in your deliverance. Then shall we know you, our Redeemer and our God, and in the shadow of your wings we shall sing with joy. Turn to page 356 in the Tefillah, the traditional Amidah, we all rise. Baruch Atah Adonai Baruch Atah Adonai Aboteinu Elohei Avraham Elohei Yitzchok, Elohei Yaakov, Ha'el Agadol, Agibor, Varora, El Elyon, Gomel Chasadim Tovim, Vekone Hakol, Vezocher Chasde Avot, Unevi, Leman 
Baruchat Adonai Magain Avraham Eternal God, the power of your spirit pervades all creation. When we open our hearts to you, we are filled with your strength, the strength to bear our afflictions, the strength to refuse them victory, the strength to overcome them. And then our will is renewed to lift up the fallen, to set free the captive, to heal the sick, to bring light to all who dwell in darkness. Add your strength to ours, O God, so that when death casts its shadow, we shall yet be able to say, O source of blessing, you are with us in death as in life. Nagid God Lecha, Ulenetzach Nitzachim Kdushat Hanak Dish, Vishifracha Elohenu Mi Pinu Lo Yamush Lo Lamva Ed. To all generations we will make known your greatness, and to all eternity proclaim your holiness. Your praise, O God, shall never depart from our lips. Baruch Atadonai Ha'el Hakadosh, Blessed is the Lord, the Holy God.
page 360. Ritzei Adonai Eloheinu b'amcha Yisrael, utfilatam b'havat hakabel, utihil ratzon tamir avodat Yisrael amecha, el karov l'chol korav, pene el avadecha v'chanenu, shofoch ruchacha alenu, v'techezena enenu b'shuvcha l'tzion barachamim, baruch at Adonai, hamachazir shechinato l'tzion. Let us rejoice and give thanks to God, whose name is blessed. He has sustained us to witness the ingathering of the exiles of our people. From all the corners of the world came a people without a land to a land remembered and waiting. They rebuilt the neglected country. Their children now grow in a land of their own. They brought life to the land, renewed vigor to our people. Thanks to God. Their creation is our pride. Together may we become a light. Modim anach nulach, shatahu aronai elohenu velohe avotenu, elohe chol basar, yotsrenu, yotser breshit. Were the sun to rise but once a year, we would all cry out, How great are your works, O God, and how glorious! Our hymns would rise up, our thanks would ascend. O God, your wonders are endless, yet we do not see. Give us new eyes, O God, restore our child. Then we shall explore the richness of our being. We shall taste ecstasy and sorrow, no mystery and revelation. And we will give thanks. As we have been blessed, so shall we give blessing. Give us understanding, O God. Help us to know we are blessed. We pray for the peace of Israel and all the nations. Our prophets envisioned an age of blessing. Still we yearn for it and work for it, as we have learned. Let just For righteousness shall lead to peace. It shall bring quietness and confidence forever. And all shall sit under the vines of the fig tree. None shall make them. We continue silently.
return to uh, that part of the uh, traditional service uh, known in, in Jewish tradition as Seder Hotza'at Sefeha Torah, the ritual for removing from the Ark the scroll of the Torah. We turn in the Sidur, in the prayer book, to page 417. And as we continue in the middle of page 417, we all rise.
the uh, sedra, the portion of the Torah that uh, we read this Sabbath morning, and that is read in synagogues throughout the world this uh, Sabbath morning, is the portion Korach. And uh, for the purpose of our discussion, <clears throat> we invite you to follow the reading in the <clears throat> larger volume, in the red-bound uh, Chumash, in the Torah translation and Torah commentary, beginning in the Chumash on page 1,000, 127, <clears throat> 1127. <clears throat> if uh, one had to describe the main theme of the portion that begins on page 1127, our portion Korach, probably use the word revolution, discord, disharmony. Uh, Korach is, uh, is your classic revolutionary type, brilliant, gifted, your classical young man, upwardly mobile, uh, a fast lane right to the top. Uh, Korach, however, is not a highly principled human being. Korach has no agenda based upon principle for the betterment, the development of the people of that ancient Israelite community. Korach's agenda is a very personal one, not principled, but rather power-oriented. His sole objective is to get Moses out usurp Moses' position and himself become the leader of the Jewish people. And to do this, Korach is not limited by principle or the truth or anything else. Dividing the people, that's fine with him if he gets him what he wants. So Korach attracts to himself two campaign managers, prime ideologues named Dathan and Abiram, and together they spread calumny against Moses. They say Moses uh, makes too many decisions, has too much power for himself. This is the classic revolutionary ideology of power to the people. They attract a great many followers. Now Moses has a more difficult job. He sees dissension, a community fragmented. Moses seeks integration. He seeks harmony. It's not his own aggrandizement. It's the team, the congregation, the family of Israel, the congregation, community of Israel as an integrative whole that concerns Moses. Sees these people fomenting good guys, bad guys, winners, losers, us versus them. Frustrated, unable to know how to contend with it, at his wit's end, Moses cries out to God to intervene. And very mightily, powerfully, does the Almighty do so. As the text describes it, the earth opens up, and as thousands of Israelites look on, we may assume stunned, aghast, and amazed, the earth swallows alive Korach, all of his revolutionary followers. They're devoured into the bowels of the earth, and as the ground closes over them, obliterated forevermore. This is high voltage punishment. I mean, it don't get much worse than this. And the rabbis, knowing this, ask a very real and relevant question. They say, why this heinous, this grievous of punishment for these revolutionaries at God's hand? That is, the sages know well what we, of course, weekly students of the text, all of us, know very well ourselves. That this is not the first or the only revolution Moses have ever had to deal with. There have been a lot of them. This is one a long line of revolution. People were hungry. They complained. They revolted. In the wilderness, the people were thirsty. Let's go back to Egypt. They revolted. In his own mishpocha, in his own family, Moses had to deal with revolution. His own sister Miriam, his own brother Aaron, Aaron plotted against him. In every case, those revolutions were dealt with, maybe they were punished, but nothing resembling the grievousness of this punishment, the earth swallowing alive Korach and these revolutionaries. So the rabbonim, the rabbis of old ask, no, what's different? What is there unique about Korach's revolution that it's recorded in scripture, powerfully to be imprinted upon us as something so wrong, so negative? Where does it differ from other disagreements? Well, for the rabbis, the answer is found in the subtle wording of the opening words of our text in verse Aleph or verse 1 on page 1127. Note the precise wording of the Hebrew and is rendered in English along with me. The text begins with these words. It reads, Vayakach Korach, Vayakach Korach, Ben Yitzhar, Ben Kahat, Ben Levi, Vedatan, Vaviram, Ben Eliyav, now Korach, son of Itzhar, son of Kohat, son of Levi, betook himself 
along with Dathan and Abiram, sons of Eliav and On, and so on. The rabbis immediately pick up on the phrase, Vayakach Korach, he betook himself. Ah, say the rabbis, himself. That is the agenda. That's what made this revolution different. Yes, say the rabbis, there were revolutions, but they were klapei shamayim. At least in the minds of the revolutionaries, however uh, missing the mark, they believed this was for the betterment of the community. But Korach was in it for himself. No guys, no subterfuge. He took himself as the priority. We would say this was a revolution based on ego, power, charisma, no principled agenda for the greater team. Why is the revolution punished this way? To remind us as Jews, as people living today in relationship with other people, that when we are in it for ourselves, when we are in it for our own ego, our own power, our own aggrandizement, when we are in it to win in a manner by which other people lose, we lose. In modern parlance, the sages are saying, when it's not win-win for the team, there are no winners. When we're in it for us, we follow the path of Korah. And individually, collectively, when our own name, our aggrandizement, our social public image is what matters to us, we go nowhere, neither do others. When we're concerned with principle, the welfare of others in a family, in a community of people, to that principle then, when we win and allow others to win, growth, joy, human blossoming is the inevitable result. Let me submit to you that what the rabbis are saying about this is true not only in our own lives. You know, when we're younger, we really believe that, uh, if I, like, we believe that life is like coins, you know? Um, if I have two quarters and I give someone one, I'm diminished, I have one left. Somehow we're taught to believe it's the same with human transaction and relationships. Somehow we believe that if I give love, if I give caring, if I let you be a winner, I'm diminished. We light Shabbos candles every week to remind us of something else. You have the light of a candle. You don't strike a match. You say the bracha, you light the candles. Candle has light. It gives light to other candles, but its light isn't diminished. It glows just as radiantly as before. When in our life, we work for the team, for principle, our light glows radiant and we bring light into others' lives. When we're concerned with us, there's no illumination, there's only despair and tragedy. And I submit to you, not only individually, but if you look at it collectively, it's writ large in the history of the Jewish people. In the 17th century, in the Ottoman Empire, there arose a man named Shabbatai Tzvi. The Jews, hundreds of thousands of them, uh, in, in in the precursor of modern Turk, in the Ottoman Empire, Jews were despairing, downtrodden, secondary citizens, and, and persecuted mightily. Svi proclaimed himself the Messiah, who would lead them out of their misery. The man had no agenda, nothing for the betterment of others. Give me your loyalty and give me your dollars, too. That was the agenda. And Svi said, I'm the Messiah. Well, when the revolution reached a fever, peel, a, a fever pitch, like Korach, the Sultan of the Ottoman Empire gave Svi a choice. And he said to the would-be Messiah, on this day at this time, right outside the palace in the square, Svi would have a choice, either to convert to Islam or be publicly beheaded. At this moment, the would-be Messiah had a revelation. And at the appointed day and appointed time in the town square, Svi proclaimed, Allah to be his God, Mohammed, God's only prophet, converted, became a Muslim. And thousands followed him in that direction. In this revolution that was solely rooted in the cult of personality, of ego, that person no longer, followers nowhere to go, were plunged into greater despair, depression, than otherwise they were before this supposed Messiah, charismatic, arrived on the scene. We see it in our own life, too. Uh, you remember the name Meir Kahana? Kahana, very charismatic, if you're aware of Israeli politics. Kahana, highly charismatic, brilliant way with words, 
very attractive in the Israeli population. An extreme right, no, no agenda for the betterment of people or community, but solely rooted in himself. Sole agenda was in Israel just for Jews. Let's get rid of all Christians, throw all Arabs out of Israel. Very charismatic man. Well, when Kahana, tragically, was assassinated here in New York some years ago, his followers had nowhere to go. There was no principle to fall back on, no greater agenda for the greater good, despair, fragmentation, virtual cutting off removal from the Israeli political process, the result. Same with us as individuals and as a group. When we're in it for us, we lose and others lose. When we are in it for principle, a greater good for the team, the group, the mishpucha, they win, we win, and we all do as a result. You know, we've had many revolutions in the last decade or so in Jewish life. Dramatic revolutions. But not one of them that has succeeded can you attach to one ego, one personality at all, one name at all. Example, in Jewish philanthropy, in terms of UJA, our Jewish equivalent of the United Way. If you're aware or involved in UJA, you know what I'm speaking of. Going back about 12, 15 years, the percentage of monies raised by Jewish communities that went to Jewish education to, to fund cheders, uh, parochials, and, and religious schools, like our own too, was about 8 to 10 percent of community funds. If you look at Jewish welfare federations across America today, 12, 15 years later, in communities like our own, the amount of Jewish money going back in to educate our young, our children, our grandchildren is close to 50 percent. It's an incredible revolution. It is attached, however, to no name, no ego, no one personality. The beneficiary is our children, our grandchildren, the future, learned, more knowledgeable than most of us were relative to Judaism in our own lives. The beneficiary is the greater people of which we're a part. Those of us who are committed to reform Judaism have seen this dramatically in the last decade. Well, a return to tradition a greater concern with the symbols of Judaism and their meaning, their power, a greater concern for Hebrew knowledge and meaning of Hebrew language lived and spoken by our children in ever more vigorous education and in worship greater involvement, not just sung to or spoken to, but involvement by the congregation. This revolution is not ascribable to one person, one ego you can name. It came about based on principle, win-win, growing people developing together. The message of 5,000 years of Korach in the negative, of Moses in the positive, comes to the life of every one of us today. And it reminds us, as an individual, we know joy blossoming well-being as we give it to others and on principle work and labor for their good and ours as part of one family, one team. When we separate ourselves and make our aggrandizement the concern, it's lose-lose and despair and dissolution, fragmentation is the result. And I want to assure you of something, that I'm sharing this with you today, not to give you a history lesson or share with you vague sermonic theoreticals, but to bring home to every one of us specifically what it is and why it is we celebrate as we do in our synagogue this Shabbos morning. We celebrate the spiritual coming of age of one young man, Bradley Werner. Bradley called to the Torah in a few moments, chanting the words of an ancient text, will link himself, forging a bond with generations, with parents, with grandparents, generations that were, and in a real sense, as a seed blossoming with generations yet to be. And yet it shouldn't escape any of us that one would be hard pressed to find from out of our tradition a teaching more relevant than what we shared to be shared today. Because if you know my friend Bradley, you know a young man who above all else is a team player. Bradley is not a taker, not in his relationships, even with the old rabbi here, with his peers, his friends, or his family. Bradley is a young man who is a giver, who is in this world to give and receive love and caring. That's who and what Bradley is. And that's true in his involvement in student government. We see it here as an involvement in our Hebrew school with his friends and with his family. And that happens not randomly, as assuredly as the apple falleth never far from the proverbial tree. It happens to Bradley, as with Andrew, because of the home, the parents that raised them. In Patty and in Glenn, people involved and giving and committed beyond self to their temple, to their community, to their friends, their greater family, of which each of them 
both of them together are apart. And if there's a prayer today, bonded with each other and with the generations that we have for Bradley, shared with Glenn, Patty, Andrew, grandparents, loved ones, it's the prayer that today will be for Glenn, no ending, but one of many, many beginnings of ever greater involvement and giving to the greater whole in his education, in his growth as a Jew, in his learning and practicing of his faith, his heritage, and his involvement in his community years and decades to come. That thereby, through Bradley's growth and winning in years ahead, they may come the greater win and blossoming of each of us, who God willing, sharing those days and years with Bradley, will know what we experience here today. Winners, all of us, a day of joy, of love, above all of gratitude. And Yerza Hashem, God willing, many more days as this beautiful Shabbos morning, so privileged that in our synagogue we share with each other this day. Bradley is going to be doing all of the reading from the Sefer Torah, from the scroll of the Torah, the Shabbos morning. And as he does so, we invite you to follow the reading uh, again in the Chumash, beginning, however, near the end of the Torah portion. We're going to begin the reading over on page 1140. Uh, more specifically on page 1140, we invite you to follow, uh, more specifically beginning with verse 26, or following in Hebrew, verse Kaf Vav. After we call the Aliyot to the Torah, following the Chatzit Kaddish, then formally by his Hebrew name and that of his parents, we'll call Bradley as our bar mitzvah this Shabbos morning. Verse Kafav or verse 26, page 1140. Yom Estelle and Jerry Werner. Amen. Yohovim to the bear. Yamarta alehem kitiku. May it be Israel et hamaser. Asher natati lachem. May it am banachaladchem. Bahare motem. Me menu through my adunai. Maser min hamaser. Neshav lachem. Tumadchem. Kadagan min hagoren. Bacham lea min hayakev. Joan Winston and Albert Foreman. Amen. Cain, Tarim, Ugamatem, Trumat Adonai, Mikol, Masro Techem, Asher Tihu, Meyet, Bene Israel, Untatem, Mimenu et Trumat Adonai, Liaharon, Hakohen. Yam Patty and Glenn Werner. Oh, 
Uh, they were chosen millennia ago ideologically, often symbolically, to parallel in a later age the main theme or circumstance of which earlier we read from the scroll. As Bradley will shortly chant the Haftarah uh, in the uh, traditional Hebrew, we invite you to follow the Haftarah this uh, Shabbat morning, again in the red-bound Chumash, uh, beginning over on page 1265, 1265. <laughs> Our Haftarah this uh, Sabbath morning begins in the 11th chapter of the book of 1 Samuel. And our reading forms a very clear parallel in a later age to what earlier we read from the scroll. Earlier we read of Moses as a leader dealing with revolution, attempt to displace Moses. Now in a much later age, another Jewish leader, the prophet Samuel, dealing with a similar revolution to replace him with a king. Earlier Moses, now Samuel. In both cases, revolution to preserve power. Bradley will chant the blessing before the Haftarah, that in the traditional cantillation, the Hebrew from the text itself and then the bracho, the traditional benediction that follow, page 1265. Baruch Adonai Asher Bachor Tovim Hanemanim Baruch Adonai Habocher Batora Uv Moshe Abdo Uv Yisroel Amo Uv Inye Haemet Bat Sedek Vayomer Shemuel Elham Lechu Vanelcha Hagilgal Uncha Desham Hamlucha Yelhu Hayam Hagilgal Bayam Lihu Shamet Shau Lifne Adonai Bagilgal Bayis Bahusham Zivahim Shlamim Lifne Adonai Bayis Marsham Shau Baholan She Israel Ad meod Vayomer Shemuel El kol Yisroel Lehine Shemati v'cholchem Lechol asher amartem li Vam li chalechem melech Veata Hine melech Mit halech lifneichem Vani Zechamti v'shavati Uvanai hinam echem, vani hitalachti lifnechem, menurai adayom haze, hinani anu vi, neged adonai, veneged meshicho, et shor, milakachati. Vachamor mi lachachti Vied mi ashachti Ed mi iratsoti Umi ad mi lachachti chofer Valim enai bo Vashiv lachem Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam Zor cho alamim Sadiq b'chol hadorot Ayel haneeman haomer veose hamdaberum kaim shechol devarav emet batzedek neeman atahu adonai eloheinu veneemanim devarecha vidavarecha admidvarecha achor lo yashuv reikam ki el melech neeman verachaman ata baruch ata adonai ha'el haneeman bechol devarav rachem al tzion ki hi beit chayenu. Ola aluvat nevesh toshia vimhera viamenu brocha brocha tadanai misamech siom bivaneha sam chenu adanai oinu biel yahu anavi avdecha uv malchut beit David mishichecha vimhera yavo viagel ibenu al kisolo yeshev zar lo yudod acherim et kivodo kivashem kachachan ishpatalo 
Shalo yich ben e roli alam vaed, Baruch atah Adonai, magain David. Al ha-Torah, v'yal ha-Vodah, v'yal han-Vim, v'yal yom ha-Shabbat ha-Zeh, Shnat ha-Talanu Adonai Eloheinu, L'yirushah v'limenu ha, l'kavod u'tifaret. Ha-Kol Adonai Eloheinu anach n'modim lach, u'mvarchim otach, Yitbarach shimcha, v'fi cholchai t'mid l'elam v'ed, Baruch atah Adonai, mekadesh ha-Shabbat. We turn back in the prayer book. We turn in the blue bound Sidur to page 422. And as we prepare to return the Sefer Torah to the Ark, as we continue at the bottom of page 422, we all rise. The Torah of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The precepts of the Lord are right, delighting the mind. The presence of the Lord is eternal, giving light to the eyes. Behold, a goodly heritage has been given you. Do not forsake it. It is a tree of life to those who hold it fast, and all who live its teachings know happiness. Its ways are ways of pleasantness, and all its paths are peace.
My Torah portion, Korah, is of yet another rebellion against Moses and Aaron during the 40 years of wandering. Korah, who was Moses' and Aaron's cousin, was jealous of their leadership and wanted to challenge them for their authority over the tribes. Korah was a Levite, but got many of his supporters from the tribe of Reuben. Korah, with his two side men, Dathan and Abiram, along with 25 other followers, went and accused Moses and Aaron of abusing their power. Korah showed many acts of violence in doing this. Moses prayed to God that the rebels would be punished, and in time they were put to death. I can relate to this because I, like Korah, have challenged my authorities, but lost. The reason being, either I was proved wrong or had no reason to back up my challenge. Korah's problem was that he had no one to replace Moses and Aaron with that were better than them. This dilemma of Korah's led many of his followers to disperse. We can still see this problem occurring today, as in Russia, when the Russian government tried to impeach Yeltsin, they could not because they too had no one better to replace him with. The people challenged Yeltsin just to challenge him. One of the reasons people challenge minorities is because they need a scapegoat. These minorities are still around today because of all the good in the world, and the goodness knows that there's no reason to challenge minorities. Keep the peace and don't prejudge. I'd like to thank all of my teachers for educating me. Thank you, Cantor Berman and Rabbi Bergman, for your guidance you've shown me and I hope was noticeable today. Thank you, Andrew, for permitting me the time alone so I could practice my lessons. And thank you to Mom and Dad for all the help, time, and stress you put into getting me here today. I hope I made you proud. I love you. He's made more than uh, more than his parents proud, but above all, uh, has made should should have made Bradley very proud today. Uh, he's also made his whole congregation very proud, and symbolic of that fact for a presentation to Bradley at this time. It's a pleasure to call upon the president of Temple Judea of Manhasset, Mr. David Fenton. Bradley, I want to say mazel tov to you. You know, everybody says that uh, this is a joyous occasion, and they use that phrase, and uh, I guess it's used very casually, but when I saw the uh, look on your parents' face, faces today, I know what the true meaning of joy is. And uh, as you and I both know, this is a beginning, uh, not, an <clears throat> not an ending. And my hope for you, my personal wish for you, is that whatever you do, as, a, as an, a Jewish adult, you will demonstrate, whether that is in learning or participating, you will demonstrate the same kind of love and the same kind of joy that will fill this sanctuary today. And I can only wish you uh, mazel tov. And the same to you, both of your parents and your whole family. And I do have here a certificate for you which uh, attests to the fact that today, for the very first time, you were called to our bima and you read from the Torah. Mazel tov to you. We turn at this time to the uh, traditional concluding portion of our service. We turn in the prayer book to page 615. As we turn to page 615 and join in the traditional Hebrew of all Lenu, we all rise.
middle of page 617. May the time not be distant, O God, when your name shall be worshipped in all the earth, when unbelief shall disappear and error be no more. Fervently we pray that the day may come when all shall turn to you in love, when corruption and evil shall give way to integrity and goodness, when superstition shall no longer enslave the mind, nor idolatry blind the eye, when all who dwell on earth shall know that you alone are God. O may all created in your image become one in spirit and one in friendship, forever united in your service. Then shall your kingdom be established on earth and the word of your prophet fulfilled. The Lord will reign forever and ever. Near the bottom of page 628. At this hour, we recall the loved ones whom death has recently taken from us those who died at this season in years past, and those whom we have taken into our hearts with our own. The memories of all of them are with us. Our griefs and sympathies are mingled as we praise God and pray for the coming of his kingdom. This time we would ask the mourners in our midst, those of us observing your sight this Sabbath, and those who wishing to stand beside the mourners in our midst, all who in memory of the six million that perished in Holocaust feel moved by the heart to do so, to please rise. Yit gadal, v'yit gadash, shemei rabba, v'yomo divrach yirutei, v'yamlich malchutei, v'chaye chon, v'yomei chon, v'chaye dochal beit Yisrael, v'agola, v'vizman kariv, Vimru Amen. Yehe Shemei Raba Mevarach Leolam Olme Olmaya Yit Barach Vishtabach Vit Paar Vit Romam Vit Nase Vit Hadar Vit Halle Vit Halal Shemei de Kudisha Brihu Leela mean call Birchata Vishirata Tushbachata Venechemata Da Amiram Bialma Vimru Amen. Yehe Shalama Raba Min Shamaya Vachayim Alenu Vialkol Yisrael Vimru Amen O Se Shalom Bim Romav Hu Yase Shalom Alenu Vialkol Yisrael Vimru Amen May the source of peace send peace to those who mourn and comfort to the bereaved in our midst this day and wherever they may be this Sabbath day and we each of us say, Amen. I just uh, have to, <laughs> for about five minutes, I've been carrying this around with me, share with you something that one of our young people, as we were in Hakafa, as Bradley was walking around with the Sefer Torah and his parents were walking behind him before returning the scroll to the Ark a moment ago, as uh, we walked around, one of the young people said to the other, nice suit. Somehow it just <laughs> had to <laughs> um, <laughs> We're going to conclude our worship uh, in just a moment. As uh, Jewish people uh, uh, traditionally and appropriately conclude every uh, communal gathering such as this with words of gratitude, of thanks on our lips, truly indicative this day of the feelings within the inner heart of every one of us in this synagogue this morning. At the very end of the service, here in the sanctuary, Bradley is going to lead all of us in the Kiddush, the traditional prayer over the wine, and thereafter in the Motzi, the prayer over the challah, the food, that in just a few minutes, right across the lobby, we're going to be sharing with one another. So we would ask you at the end of the service to please remain at your seat so that Bradley and his immediate family can reach the back of the sanctuary. Please remain standing at your seat, but please do also face the back of the sanctuary and do join with Bradley and the rest of us in the Kiddush, in the Motzi, and giving thanks for this 
beautiful day in, in one young man's life and in a real sense in the, in the spiritual and the life journey of every one of us. Uh, but before we join in the Kiddush, in the Motzi, we're going to join in singing together a very traditional Shabbos morning melody. We're going to join with one another in Ein Kelohenu. Should you wish the words, either in Hebrew or English letters, Ein Kelohenu is found near the back of the Sidur on page 730. But before we join uh, in Ein Kelohenu, at this time we call Bradley and his immediate family to the ark to be blessed in accordance with our tradition as with them we all of us once again rise Eloheinu velohea votenu our God and God of our ancestors, we gratefully give thee thanks, O God, for this blessed opportunity, after years of dreaming and hoping, to stand before thee in this sacred place on this joyful day. We are grateful, O God, for the countless generations of our people and for the parents and loved ones in our own lives whose greatest wish has been to train us in the knowledge of goodness and virtue, in the knowledge of Torah. We have come to this sanctuary today to share in a most meaningful milestone in the lifelong spiritual growth of Bradley Werner. Help him, O Lord, to remain loyal to the Jewish heritage that now is his. And in years to come, we pray that Bradley will continue to learn and to grow, and that he may continue to be a blessing, a blessing to himself, to his parents and family, a blessing to his people and to all people. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam, shehechiyonu v'kiyimonu v'higiyonu lazman hazeh. We praise you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who has kept us in life, sustained us, and enabled us to reach this beautiful moment. Amen.